So lately I've been doing a lot of cooking content and that has left me with a lot of random ingredients. So I figure it would be a good time as any to do another improv cooking session where I use random ingredients around my studio and not use any recipe whatsoever. And today I'm gonna try doing a little hot pot thing. Now hot pot across Asia goes by a whole bunch of different definitions. You might know it as shabu shabu or you might know it as Chinese hot pot or fo guo where you would put ingredients into a big bowl of broth and cook it all in the stock to make like a giant delicious communal meal. But there's another type of hot pot where you basically just put all your ingredients together into a large container, either earthenware or cast iron, and just cook it all together to make it form a stew. In Japanese, this might be called nabe, and in Korean, this might be called chonggol. It traditionally does have some meat in it, but since I didn't have any around, I figured just to make mine vegan. But obviously, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. Because tomatoes were not in season, I figured I would roast them a little bit at 300 175 degrees for 45 minutes, which has the effect of reducing the water in the tomatoes, caramelizing what is there, and concentrating the flavor. A step that is completely unnecessary with in-season summer tomatoes, but since I made this video in like a Michigan winter time, we do the best with what we got. Also another thing that helps is giving your tomatoes a hit of salt because that will mix with the glutamic acid that is pretty highly concentrated in tomatoes and that gives you MSG, which is delicious and we want that in our food. Now doing your nabe in this way is I believe called the millefeuille nabe. Millefeuille of course is French and it means thousand sheets and it's usually attributed to pastries. But in this case, instead of using butter and flour, you are using Napa cabbage, layering lots of delicate little sheets in your pot and then cooking it all together with a whole bunch of other ingredients, forming a beautiful little stew with a very substantial vegetable element. So I looked it up and apparently Napa cabbage is fine to give to your dogs in small amounts. I realize now that small amount is subjective and I just gave my dog a Napa cabbage sheet that is as big as his head. That being said, I did film this a couple of weeks ago. Hugo is fine, everyone. He is just fine. He is gassy and fine. Now, a lot of times what people will do in between the leaves of Napa cabbage is insert very thin slices of meat to give it substance and flavor. These meat slices often come in three different varieties, mostly beef, pork and lamb, with the general purpose of being eaten in Chinese hot pot or shabu shabu. But as it turns out, it's perfect for this use as well. A lot of larger Chinese grocery shops or Japanese markets will have this meat available. You might have a hard time getting a Western butcher to prepare meat in this way as it involves keeping the meat frozen and then slicing it from frozen to get them like an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch thick. However, you might be able to use something like cold cuts. So maybe roast beef, sliced turkey, thinly sliced corned beef, or or even some Canadian bacon. You get the idea at this point. I wouldn't use regular bacon because it's a little too fatty and you'll just end up with a lot of fat in your broth. The whole point of this is really to have a one pot meal where you get to eat everything in the bowl. So too much fat would just make that harder to achieve here. As you can see, I layered my millefeuille with oyster mushrooms. Now I'm transferring everything out into a slightly larger pot because I realized that what I should have done is layered the bottom with the tomatoes and the spices because when the water boils, all of that flavor will rise to the top and flavor the cabbage as well. Since I plan on putting it back in, to make it easier, I actually greased up the pot a little bit with some of the ginger scallion oil that I had made previously. Not only is it going to help things slide back in, but it's also going to add some great flavor to the overall dish. Also keeping in mind that since my hot pot is completely vegan, this is the only fat source throughout the whole thing. And a little bit of fat is good for you. In fact, it helps you absorb your vitamins. Julia Child taught me that. To the bottom of the pot, I added some bay leaf, some star anise, and some ginger, but also things like garlic and onions would be fantastic there. Of course, I'm thinking of all these things after the fact, but remember, I'm just going off the cuff here. I don't really know what I'm doing, or I should say, I do know what I'm doing, I just don't really have a plan or any ingredients that I actually shopped for. As you can see, the tomatoes roasted beautifully and they will be my main source of flavor for this broth. Other things to consider here besides onions would be some dried shiitake or porcini mushrooms or maybe even just a ham bone. You don't even have to use just water for this. You could flavor the broth itself with some chicken stock, some beef stock, maybe some vegetable stock that you made, perchance some superior stock, like the stuff that I just showed you how to make in the previous video, maybe? 
How was that for a segue into having a card right here? I think that was pretty brilliant. I'm new at this, but I'm still proud of myself. Now for how I'd cook this. I would pretty much just bring this up to a boil and then I'd turn the heat down really slow at a pretty consistent simmer for like 45 minutes, depending on how soft you'd like your cabbage. Since this doesn't have any raw meat in it and my vegetables are clean, it really just comes down to personal preference in the texture that I'd like my vegetables to be. The same thing would apply to you if your meat was cured or already cooked. While we wait for that to boil, let's go back to our side quest here. If you were with us in the previous video, you'll remember that I made us ginger scallion oil. A tasty savory oil-based condiment that is great on chicken or beef or pork or pretty much anything that is salty or savory. And while normally we keep the solids and the oils together, today I wanted to try something a little different. So I separated the two, used the oils for a cooking fat such as what I used to grease this pot with, and now we're gonna use the solids to make a compound butter. Compound butters are pretty much butters that have been flavored with solid elements. And I'm pretty sure it's French in origin, mostly because of the fact that there are specific compound butters butters with specific names. For example, beurre à la bourguignonne is butter with garlic and parsley, and beurre maître d'hôtel is butter with parsley and lemon juice, I think? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's lemon juice because the French, they like to keep it fresh. Anyways, that's what it is. So what I'm doing here is I've mixed the ginger scallion solids and remember that they're salted, so I used unsalted butter so things don't get too salty, with butter that is room temperature so it mixes in well and it incorporates really easily. Now what I'm doing is I'm using plastic wrap to make what is essentially a roulade, rolling the butter forward so that it tightens into a really tight cylinder and compresses everything really nicely. If you accidentally left your butter in the fridge this whole time and it's cold, it's gonna be really hard to incorporate in with whatever you're trying to make a compound butter with, but you can still do it by using a pastry cutter or if you have a stand mixer with a paddle attachment, just throw your butter in, throw the thing you wanna make the compound butter in and just let it go. That is probably the easiest and fastest way to do this. Now that you've made everything, be sure to put it in your fridge so that things can chill and set very nicely and I'll show you how I use this in the next video. Checking back on our hot pot, this is what it looks like when it only begins to start to simmer. We're gonna bring it back and make sure that it comes back to a boil, which is what this looks like. We will reduce the heat to a simmer and come back in about 30-45 minutes depending on how you like it. I'm pressing some of the cabbage down so that I can get even coverage and easy cooking and then I'm topping it off with just a little bit of salt and this is what the finished result looks like. The smell of this was amazing. It was really tomatoey, and you can just like tell that it was gonna be super umami. The cabbage was nice and soft, but still had a little bit of crunch at the stems, which is quite nice. I prefer my vegetables be on the slightly raw side. This was really cooked, but still really good. Because this was a purely vegetable stock, it was a little bit on the thinner side. What I would do the next time would be probably to use a little bit of kombu or seaweed because that adds a nice gel and fullness to the broth. There are also other ways that you can add fullness without using the collagen from meat. For example, there are some mushrooms that add a very similar gel texture that kombu does, or even the soluble fiber that you can get from boiling barley in your broth does a really good job in giving you like a soup that has a really good stick to your ribs satisfaction to it. Being said, because I'm putting this voiceover literally sitting here in the cusp of a really nice spring day, keeping this broth at the current lightness that it has is kind of perfect for like a soup that you can drink in summertime. It's not too heavy and it's quite refreshing and you can use all the vegetables from your garden or that farmer's market CSA that you sign up for but then don't really know what to do with like 90% of the vegetables you get in your box. Finally, a reason to be happy to get cabbage in one of those things. 